Hello again, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you how to navigate the 3D space in DAS Studio from our perspective. So there's two parts to that. One is that we need to know what we need to do in order to spin the 3D scene in DAS Studio around as if it were the environment in a three-dimensional computer game perhaps but there's also something that we can do hardware wise as to how do we actually do that best and it might sound really trivial when i tell you this but the best way to navigate the 3d environment is by using a three button standard mouse like this one by logitech i have about four of these lying around here for several computer systems they all look more or less the same they've got a left mouse button they've got a right mouse button and they've got a scroll wheel in the middle with which you can zoom but you can also click on it so that you can uh, do certain functions there and they're only about 15 20 dollars in the sale so it's it's not really the world and i'm mentioning this because i've been using a trackpad for my with my mac for the longest time and i was extremely happy about it and trackpads are some kind of a newer technology you have gestures and you have you know touchy swipey things but then of course there's pens and tablets you know the wacom series there is trackballs and there's also um, kind of other touch screen things that i say touch screens already i can't remember there's um, the connection series of 3d mice and all these things work and uh, for office work they may be really good and really great but for 3d work they may not be appropriate and it took me a while to figure this out that actually a standard three button mouse really does the trick adequately well so if your standard input method for your computer is currently something else then consider getting a mouse just to see if that works a little bit better to navigate around scenes so it works great for playing a 3d computer game but the same principles kind of apply to navigate the same scene or navigate similar scenes in dash studio so uh, with the mouse, of course, the other thing that you may need is a standard uh, keyboard, um, you know, one of those type things here. And we need that because it's, it's efficient and effective to sometimes hold down a key on your keyboard while holding down something else on your mouse and then moving things around. And that's how, that's the most efficient way of navigating a 3D environment. There are other ways and I'm going to show them to you all in this episode. So let's get started. This is um, DAS Studio as we left it, almost as we left it a minute ago. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. First of all, I'm going to collapse this whole uh, pane on the left hand side here so that we have a little bit more screen real estate. On the right hand side, I'm going to switch over from the AUX viewport. We're going to learn all about that later to the scene tab so that we get an outline of the objects in our scene that we have here. And then the third thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this aspect ratio thing off here. So that's currently giving me an indication of what would be rendered on my frame, on my picture, if I were to render this out. But we're not gonna talk about rendering for quite a while, so I'm gonna switch this off so that we have just a big window into our 3D world. So that happens by clicking on that little context menu in the viewport here and selecting Show Aspect Frame. So make sure that tick box is not showing. And then we have this, this whole thing to ourselves, which is kind of nice. Now, navigating 3D space can happen uh, without the keyboard, just with the mouse and with controls on the screen. So there's on the top here, you can see this little cube and that has several sides here. I can left click and drag this cube around and that will spin around my world. If I move my mouse up, I can kind of tilt the camera like this. If I pull it down, I can do this and then I can move it left and right. And this is how I can kind of look around. I can't currently walk around, but you know, we'll get to that in a moment. So that's just how we spin the, the 3D world around. Right now there's nothing in our 3D world, so that makes it a little bit um, kind of boring to, uh, to do that. So perhaps we'll drop in a primitive uh, to illustrate what we can do there. Head over to create new primitive and that will drop something of a kind of primitive 3D building block into our scene. So you have under type, you can choose if you want to build a cube, cylinder, cone, sphere, torus or a plane. A torus is kind of a donut thing uh, and a cone is kind of a, a round 
pyramid thing. Uh, I'm going to stick with a cube and uh, you can give size options down here. I'm just going to leave the default and hit accept. And that's my cube. So again, with this cube on the top here, we can now move around my cube and I can look at it from the top or from the bottom or from all the sides. And that's kind of, you know, that's, that's one thing I can do here. But I can also see that the cube is kind of at the towards the bottom of my screen and I would like to kind of lift it up a little bit so that it's more in the in the center here. And I can also do that with this little option here, the, t the, the kind of two arrows that are the, the, the X, the, like the plus sign thing arrow here. If I do that, if I left click onto that option and left click and hold it and then move the mouse up, then that is exactly the the thing I get. I can move the mouse up or down and that's how I can do that. Apart from the cube here there's also this little thing just above the above that little plus icon and that is uh, exactly the same as the cube basically so I've got that I've got that there twice. I've got the cube and I've got this spinning around tumbling around jobby here. Then underneath the plus sign here, I've got the hourglass loop type thing. If I left click and drag on this, you can see that I'm zooming into the cube. And if I hold, hold my mouse button down and just move the mouse forward, I can see that I'm zooming out. You can even lift the mouse off the trackpad and just, you know, keep going then and that's how you zoom out. So this is, in 3D terms, this is a process called dollying. That is actually something different than zooming. Zooming means I'm shifting the focal length of my camera and with it the perspective changes. We're going to talk more about that in the chapter about cameras and how to set them. But dollying means that I physically move the camera in regards to my 3D object. So if this is my 3D object, I'm doing this with the camera, I'm moving it further away or closer to the object. That is what dollying means. And it's an old camera term, I well, an old camera term, it's a camera term from, from the movie industry in which the dolly is physically the thing on which the camera is mounted and it usually has wheels on it and uh, it sometimes is mounted on tracks that can then be used to physically move the camera forward or backwards. So that's what we do with this thing. Then there's also one other thing which is this little kind of square icon with a plus in the middle and that is used to bring a selected object into the into view right now so i could for example m use the the like the double arrow icon here what is that actually called that is called let's hover over and see if the pan icon there we go it's the pan icon so if i go and pan away from my object that i can't see the cube anymore i can still kind of tumble around and now see that the cube is kind of in the distance there somewhere but you can imagine that if you have a lot of objects in your scene and you think i need to really see that close up there in the distance then you can use your scene tab here to select your object so right now nothing is selected but you can select that cube right here now it's selected and you can also see that this this thing has got a little manipulator thing I will talk about that in a moment and so now that it's selected I can now click this kind of square icon and go boom there it is it now focuses right into the view no matter how far away I am so that's kind of cool once we start dealing with characters you will see that all the characters or all scenes are basically made up of several individual building blocks and the scene tab allows you to select one of them and zoom right into that so if you want to zoom right into the hand of a character you can just select the hand even if you see the whole character and you say I really want to see the hand to put a kind of a hand gesture on there you can select that icon and then just pops right into view. And then the final option is reset. So uh, if you click that, then this is kind of the default view. It's a good thing to have because sometimes, especially when you're experimenting and playing around, you tweak parameters in a way that you think, oh, I can't really see anything anymore. What have I done? And then you can just select that button and that'll kind of re reset your scene there. Now I've just done something instinctively here and that is use the mouse button, the, the sort of the, the middle, the mouse wheel here. The scrolling that mouse wheel in and out is the same as using that dolly icon here. So that is exactly the same. You can use that either by left clicking and dragging uh, forward and backwards on the mouse or you can just scroll the mouse wheel here. See, this is, this is exactly what that is all about. So that's kind of cool. 
if you need a reminder of what these things do, you can just hover over them and then you'll see what each of these things do. The pan icon, for example, left clicking and dragging does this with the camera, but right clicking and dragging does kind of seemingly the same. So it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, but you can also right click and drag backwards and forwards and that will kind of, you know, do the same thing. So like left clicking and uh, that does this thing up and down, whereas left clicking up and down just kind of dollies in and out. So, you know, different things, different mouse combinations, try them out. I believe uh, this guy, control, command, and right mouse button in drag. So let's try that. That is banking the camera. So you can do all kinds of interesting things with these combinations. But um, the more powerful, so now that I've kind of banked the camera like this, and you think, oh, how am I gonna reset that? It's a good, good, good idea to press that little arrow at the bottom and that'll kind of reset the view. That's something, you know, that you can do. But what I like even better than using these things, they require my mouse to be in that position. And I personally don't really like that. So Das Studio has another thing built in that most other 3D applications have, and they let you navigate 3D space using a modifier key together with the mouse. So I believe the default is something rather screwy that you have to control and shift and left click and then you can move around an object but you can set this up so that it kind of floats your boat the way you want it to work and let me show you where that is if you head over to window workspace then at the very bottom you have the customize option and if you head in there then you see what the default uh, options currently are at the very bottom here there's viewport shortcuts and the view controls you've got this drop down menu which currently says orbit but you also have rotate pan dolly bank zoom dolly and zoom focal length so uh, quite a few options here orbit is what we've what we've done with this little guy here or with the cube here that's orbiting and by default that studio wants you to click control and alt and use the left mouse button so if I do that, if I just use the default here, I could cancel out here. So control and alt on your keyboard together and then left click and drag anywhere you are in the viewport will do this. And that's kind of cool. To make that really your own, I, I don't think it's a great design choice to having to press two keys. I'm kind of used to pressing one key and doing something with a mouse. You can easily change that. So again, under window, workspace, customize, I would then go and just click into this field here and just click in it, click in it once, whoop, double click in it once perhaps. <laughs> and then you click that modifier key. So in my case, I'm just gonna use Alt. And then I'm gonna click my mouse, left click that here, and then it's got that locked in. So Alt, left mouse button does that. You can hit apply. And then Das Studio will kind of make that its own. You can hit accept to make that window go away. And now I can go, no matter where my mouse is, hit Alt, left mouse drag, and that will orbit around the object. I'd like to do the same with panning. So like this guy here, like, you know, up and down. Uh, zooming or kind of dollying, that's already taken care of by the middle mouse button scroll wheel. Uh, but the, the pan, I'd like to do... Uh, specifically under Windows, Workspace, Customize. I like to do that with a Shift key. It's kind of, I'm used to that from, from other packages. So again, I'm gonna go over here and say Pan. That's what I'd like. Control, Alt, Right Mouse button is currently assigned. Not what I want. I'm double clicking in here. I'm gonna hold the Shift key down, click the left mouse button, and then I'm gonna hit Accept. And now Das Studio will remember that. So Shift, left mouse button lets me do this. Alt left mouse button lets me do that. And that is how you use 3D navigation, the basics of 3D navigation in Das Studio. There are other ways of doing things, of, of course. So for example, you can walk through a larger scene literally with the keyboard and mouse controls as if you're navigating a first person or third person shooter game. Das Studio supports that. And I do have another video on my channel that'll explain to you how that works. So check it out if you wanna do that. So this is particularly good for larger scenes. For smaller scenes, that's not, not useful, but for, for larger kind of stonemason type scenes that's that can come in handy definitely um, join me in the next video i hope this was helpful if you liked it of course then please share it with friends family and total strangers subscribe to my channel and speaking of subscribing 
did you know that you can also catch the Dash Studio 101 podcast on my podcast feed? That's a separate feed in addition to my 3D podcast in which you can listen to all my videos on an audio stream. So, you know, while you're walking, while you're driving a car, that sort of thing. It's, it's can be, it can be very helpful. I thought I'd mention it here. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.